My name is Atem Tuch Aleu. I was born in Sudan. Yeah, so um, Lab Kakuma, on, um, I remember very well, was March 3rd, 2001. That the day I left Kakuma, Robert Giska. And I arrived here in Utah on March 7th, 2001. And it was at evening time. Um, first time for me to fly on the plane. I never in my life. Um, from Kaukuma to Nairobi, Kenya. And then from Nairobi to Amsterdam in Europe. And then from Amsterdam to New York. From New York to Chicago. From Chicago to Salt Lake Airport. Um, on that journey, first time testing different food that I never tested before it was a little bit chalk to me on, on the plane. Um, eating a, a type of food I never eat, and it failed me like I was a little bit have a stomach ache and also sick of any other food and told myself I'm not going to make it in the U.S. if this is the food that I'm going to eat every day in, you know, in the U.S. I remember there was something like a salad, um, something like different way of cooking chicken and all these things. So everything was new to me, actually. And I'm very sensitive when I'm eating food that I never had before. So that was like another trauma, mostly, to me about food. And then compared to all the other things that happened to me, it was tricking my trauma back to my memory. I came here during almost to the end of winter time. So it, there was still snow on the ground. My first time seeing is snow. I never seen it before. Came with other group of lost boys. I was 21 years old. My group was a second group arrived in Salt Lake. We were put in two bedroom at Holland apartment. So there were two bedroom apartments that we were put in, four of us, two of us in one room and the other two in one room. So they help you for only three months paying your rent and utility bill. After three months, you are on your own. You have to find a job. You have to be responsible of paying your own rent. And that's the situation we were in. We went to Horizonte. That's where I start to complete my high school. So. Through the connection at Horizonte, someone again went and talked to Utah Art Council. It's now changed to uh, Division of Art and Museum. Someone went and talked to them, and someone made an appointment for me to go there. So I walked from 1700 South all the way to South Temple, and I was carrying 10 paintings with me. It took me more than three hours to get there. Jean Harwell, she was shocked when uh, she saw me, and she never seen this man before, as you know, a strange man. And she told me, how did you get here, and how can I help you? So I took the 10 painting and put them on her desk, and I say, someone told me that you can help me. And then where she just opened the painting, and she was shocked seeing those paintings. Um, and then he said, okay, how did you get here? I told her I walk. So she just put me on her car and drove me all the way to my apartment. And then she looked for a different uh, gallery to display my artwork. So my first show was June 2001 with the uh, Art Access Gallery in downtown. And that changed um, my life mostly uh, from that angle. From that, I s say there are many people in the camp who have the same talent that I can help. And that's where I start my nonprofit organization called Africa Rovages Artist Club. To go back in the camp and use my painting, whatever money I get for my painting, I just buy supplies and go with them and, and you spend three months with them there uh, in the camp. My life and my success start from learning from, you know, being connected with the great people, um, 
back to um, the guy who helped me in the camp. He was still working with the U, I mean, uh, with the IOM. So when I came here, he just called his father in Boston, um, David Champ. And his father has a plan in Frobo. And it turned out that the, um, the guy is called uh, David Bond, who was a professor at BYU. She went and talked to David. And David went and came with a lot of his students from BYU and show up at my apartment. I don't know how they get my address. Um, and then that's how um, my interest of going to BYU began and say, yeah, maybe I need to, um, to go to BYU. And so through that connection, uh, David became my best friend, 100%. I'm not a member of LDS Church, and I respect what they do, but I, I became like, I mean, he became like a father to me, and I call him a father because he opened a lot of door for me. I got into BYU. It's always my call to help people because I learned that helping is not about having money or having something to give to people. If you have an idea or uh, a vision, and if you think that you can use your vision to help other people, use it. You don't need to have money to help people. And that's how I learned to extend whatever I have and share it with people. I can do things. Um, I can draw my painting and share it with other people. Uh, give away some of my painting to people who are close to me because I know they're going to take care of it. I don't really sell my artwork. I give it to people that I know they will take care because it's part of me. It's about me. It's not about making anything out of it. So I went to the camp the first time in 2004 and opened an art program there. Um, there were 75 students. I spent a good three months with them, uh, training them, bring their artwork back, <coughs> and then have another art show, and then went back in, nine, I mean, in 2005. That where I met my wife. She was in Uganda. Uh, she was a student. In 2006, we got married in, in Uganda. Uh, we live, uh, we had a long distance relationship until 2009 when she came with my son. Back to BYU, it's not easy to go to BYU if I'm not a member of the church because the school support by the church and that is very understandable. So my tuition at BYU was higher than any other student because those students who are member of the church, they pay ties to the church and I don't pay any ties to the church. So they charge me like a non-member because I don't contribute anything to the church anyway. But um, they were so helpful to me. I got a lot of scholarship um, to cover all my tuition. Um, I never took any loan from BYU and through many other people who just want to help. And I remember one time someone, it was during Christmas time, a lady just showed up at my apartment, and I don't know how she know my apartment, with an envelope, and then she just, you know, knocked the door, and then, and when I came to open the door, she already left and went to her car and left. I took the envelope, and there was $200 in the envelope. The reason why I had a degree in art was to honor what I have, but I never turn away from helping people. And that's where I began like thinking I have to cheap from my art and think about how to use art to building peace and helping people. And I went to Brandeis doing that program, but Brandeis also, I already had a good connection with them through my artwork. I had a couple of art shows with them, and uh, they are the one who helped me to reserve, you know, you know, to preserve my artwork in a state of selling. When I told them that I, I don't want to sell this artwork, I want to keep it as a history. When South Sudan became uh, independent and more stabilized, I want the artwork to be taken back to, uh, 
to South Sudan and put them in the museum. <coughs> because these are the history that we need to, to show to others. Uh, because I have a strong belief in those artwork because um, they help people because a lot of South Sudanese were born in the refugees camp. They just heard about what their parents went through, but they never seen it. But seeing the artwork will help them. So that was the vision behind it. So I went and took my master program at Brandeis the first year in 2008. Um, got an email from Harvard University that they need someone who know Denka to come and uh, teach Denka. And it was a surprise to me, like, you can't even find Denka in, on the uh, social media because it's, it's, you know, it's, not, it's not a main language in South Sudan. We have 64 different languages in South Sudan, but why Denka? And I, I took that opportunity to, uh, uh, to work for Harvard and teach Denka, and I then I became a program coordinator for African and African American study. Um, still love the job, but uh, I have to choose between the family and the job. So I have to choose to move back to Utah because my family like it here than Boston. So my artwork um, been in many places, and I mentioned early. Main thing is about awareness, teaching people and let people understand the history behind uh, behind the painting. Um, each painting, to me, I say it is about a thousand book. If we go into a detail, and my main goal from the beginning is to reach as many people as I could reach with my work. So it started in 2001 year, and then 2004 I had a show at Utah Valley. Um, then I think 2007, I had a show over a year um, at the Cultural Celebration Center. 2005 and six and seven, I had a show in many places in the U.S., like University of Minnesota, Harvard University, Brandeis, and University of Vermont. My advice to young people, and I have two things that were very important to me, and mostly three things. One is think about all the journey that I went through. I never had a foot on my, I mean, I never had foot on my own or water, but someone feed me after I was still alive. Someone that I don't know come with food, come with whatever I need, come with blanket. I was naked from the beginning and someone gave me clothes. I did not buy them. It's showing when you have hope, and someone help you, that person help you so you can help other people. And whatever way you're going to use it is up to you, but if you think about it in a, and use it in a positive way, you can help a thousand of people. And that's one thing. The other thing is what I do in my own uh, territory, whatever I am control, what, what, what do I have control over? It's telling me in my dream, it's not about having money. It's any vision you have. And if it's for you or for you and others. If it's for you and others, use it. And that's what I use in my artwork. It was for me and it was for others. So it was helping me also with healing me from the trauma that I went through and helping other people in another way. So any challenges come in life, any, any time, but there is a lot of opportunity come with those challenges. It's up to you which one you want to grab, and then you're not going to help. It's not all the lost boy and girl who went through this has the same history that I have. Some of them are not helping themselves anyway because of the trauma. Some of them like fail. Um, they can't handle it. I'm not saying that why, but it's too much for them. Um, if you choose to be defeated by the situation, you can't help yourself and you cannot help other people. But when you fight the situation and be more positive and utilize that to help yourself and help other people. 
So that's my advice.